What's up, everybody? How are you? How's that going? Happy holiday season. Okay, so um, at the shop these days, we're making paper mache snowmen. This is my uh, work in progress. It's a this is a, a roll of old roll of duct tape that I'm using to hold it. I'm gonna show you how I do this, and uh, we're never gonna get through the whole thing right now. I'm gonna show you the first part. But if you'd like to join along, uh, do this at home. It's fun. I'm also doing this every Wednesday and Thursday here at the shop through December if you want to come and do it here. But you don't have to do it here. You can do it at home. So here's how it goes. What you need is newspaper. This is newsprint. But if you have any kind of newspaper at home, like uh, if you don't have newspaper, go buy a newspaper and then rip it up. If you have no way of getting through a newspaper, but you can come to the shop, let me know. I have a lot of this newsprint. You really need newsprint. You can't use regular copy paper. It's too thick. You need this thin newsprint stuff that they use for the newspapers. Uh, and you're gonna have to take it and cut it into small pieces. I'll show you that in a second. What you also need, balloons. You need a balloon like this. I have a couple of balloons that I've already blown up. And you need uh, some kind of thing to hold your uh, balloon in place. Like a roll of tape, an old roll of tape. These are shaving cream caps. Uh, orange juice caps would work. An old like scrappy roll of duct tape. Um, this is a PVC pipe tube that I have or you can use a cup like this but this might be too high uh, because it might tip over so if you want to use a cup you can rip it uh, I was gonna use scissors but it's better if you rip it so just go like this and rip the cup so it's lower to the ground and then put a couple of tears in it like this and I'll show you why in a second so that's what you need you need that and you need glue and water and some kind of tray to do your paper mache work. Um, you could use a plate, an old plate. Ask the grown-up around you if there's an old plate that you can get messed up. You can always wash it, it's just glue and water, but you don't want to use a nice plate. It might get your grown-ups upset. I use these paint trays. I get them at Home Depot. They're like the, the filler ones. I use them all the time. They're really good and they're super cheap. Okay, so how does it work? This is what you gotta do. You gotta get a balloon, any color, it doesn't matter, and you gotta blow it up, but not blow it up all the way. This is like, uh, however big you want your bottom of your snowman. When we make snowmen here, we don't do three. It's too hard. Paper mache snowman three? No way, I won't do it. Three mounds? I just do one big mound, and then I put a smaller mound on the top. So you gotta take your balloon. You might need a grown-up to help you do this, because you gotta tie it. You gotta go like this. So blow it up, however you think you want your, uh, your snowman to be. You can make it small or big. I'll do it like, I'm gonna to try to make the same size. So you gotta tie it. The trick to tying it is to use two fingers and pull it like this. This is latex, so you should be able to stretch it. So you go like this, you wrap it around your finger, and then you try to open your fingers and you squeeze it through like this, and then you go like that. That's how you tie a balloon. Uh, I don't know exactly. You might need a, a grown-up to help you do that. So you do something like that, and then, I don't have another balloon here, but you have to have another balloon I'm not gonna bother blowing it up. Like a smaller balloon like this, so see? Eventually, that happened the last time. Eventually, you're gonna have uh, your snowman look like something like this. I might make his head a little bigger. But anyways, okay, so you take your cup or your pipe or your shaving cream top and you place it like this. Now, it, depending on how you rip the cup, it might do stuff like this and it might irritate you, so you might get upset. Don't get upset, just do stuff like this and get it so you can kind of stick it in a little bit and if you have tape, maybe get a little bit of tape and tape it to the bottom. It doesn't matter because you're going to keep it on here for a while for it to dry. This is a project that's going to take time, uh, a lot of time. If you have it, do it. But if you don't have a lot of time, this is not the project for you. Skip to another project. So you take the glue, you take your container, and you pour the glue in. I'm not going to use this glue because I'm going to keep it. This is my big thing of glue that I use. I'm gonna pour a little glue. Look at this, this is like gooey glue. You get a good amount of glue. Oh, it's getting a little messy, but that's okay. You should probably have a tablecloth of some sort on, the, on their table. And then a little bit of water, just a little bit of water. It's like cooking. And then you mix it together like this. This is the fun part. You go like this. Now, before you start mixing it, you should prepare your paper, which I didn't do. I have paper prepared, but I didn't talk about it. But your newspaper, you don't want to mix the glue and get glue all over your hands and then have to start ripping paper because it's really hard to rip paper with glue all over your fingers. So you want to do the ripping of the paper first. 
which I will try to do with sticky hands because I don't want to cut this video. But look, I'm going to wipe my hands on my apron and I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to take this piece of uh, newsprint paper and you're going to either use a scissor and cut strips. <laughs> my big scissors, I love these scissors. You want to cut a lot of paper first. Get a lot. I usually put all my paper in a bowl. Look at my bowl. I'll show you in a second. Look. I have a lot of paper cut into little pieces, all different sizes. But you want to do that, or you can rip it. It's hard to do, but you want strips like this. And you can even rip it again like that. It's okay if they come like that, because that's fine. And you can just sit here and rip paper for a while first. It's very satisfying to rip paper. All little pieces like this. You want thin strips. It's going to take the more time. You can't really use this on your uh, balloon because it's too big. It's going to crinkle. It's going to make it messy. The thinner and smaller and scrappier all your papers are, the better it is. The more time it's going to take, but that's okay. So you go like that, right? See, I prepared all of my paper in advance. So you get all your paper, and what you want to do, the trick is, keep the paper away from the glue. One time I put all my paper in the glue, it's a bad idea. Don't do that. So here's how it goes. Now, it's very tedious. It's very tedious, but it's so much fun. I can only do this for a few minutes at a time, but you just start. Now, you take your water and glue mixture that you've mixed up, and you dip your paper in like this. And then you take uh, scissor fingers like this and you squeegee it and squeegee it and squeegee it. You smooth it out. You don't want giant clumps of uh, gluey mess on your, um, on your paper. And then you just start putting it on like this. And Luke is here nearby, so I'm going to ask him to come here. Luke, can you come to the camera and make sure that I'm in the frame? You are in the frame. I'm in the frame. Oh, thank gosh. Okay, so they go like this. You see my finger go like this? I'm showing them how you like squeegee the... the the paper. And here's the secret of paper mache You need to think about it like, okay, you guys play with Legos? You know how you do Legos when you're building like a wall? You have to do it like every other bricks and big size, small sizes, big, you know what I'm talking about? Like you have to uh, make them stronger. You can't just put one brick all the way up, it'll topple down. You gotta kind of space it like that. It's the same thing with paper mache. You gotta use different sizes. Go like this, always squeegee, always squeegee. You're talking about like a good 45 minutes of sitting down and, and just paper mache -ing. You don't want to work in one spot for too long. You want to have, you want to work across the entire piece. And don't worry if it sticks to your cup because you can pry it off afterwards. When this whole thing dries, it might stick to the cup, but it's okay because once this dries a couple of coats, you can actually pop the balloon and then uh, cut away and then even out the bottom. That's, it's, it's a long process. I'm going to make a couple of videos where I'm going to just work on this piece. I'll keep posting a video. I won't stay on too long, uh, but if you want, get yourself your balloon, get your paper. You have to do a little bit of prep work in advance. You might need a grown-up to help you. Get all your materials, get it all ready, and then you just sit down, put some music on, or uh, I don't know, a show that you like that you're not really needing to pay attention to, uh, and just kind of just sit here and, and do this. This is very therapeutic. It's a lot better than watching a video. If it, uh, like a YouTube video, which this is. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> it's better than watching a video, even though this is a video, but you know what I mean. Like, uh, I don't know, kids watch videos of people playing video games. I don't understand. I don't understand that. I don't understand it. I never will, but they like it. Different sizes, and you have to cross and cross and make sure the papers. So if the paper's too big, let me show you. Let me show you what I mean. If you use a giant piece of paper like this, you might get lazy. Say, I want to do this faster. It's not going to work. You can never get a paper this big. Watch this. I'm going to show you. You can't get a paper this big to go on it without it being bumpy like this. You see, that's no good. It's bad. You don't want that. You want to take this paper and rip it into small little pieces, especially the first coat. The smaller the pieces, the better. Um, Look, it's bouncing around. Once it gets a little heavy, it's not going to move as much. You've got to be super careful. It might happen like where that happens. It's okay. Don't worry. Let it fall. Um, pick it up after it falls. You don't want to leave it on the surface unless you have a plastic tablecloth. This is paper. If I leave it like this too long, it might stick to the paper. But you can do this for a little while and then start working different areas. Just keep it moving. Keep it moving. Don't stop. See, like this, this one's still wet. 
but I covered the whole thing. And I'm going to do a couple more coats on this one, and that's what it should look like after a while. And if you keep crossing the, and you'll see with the newspaper, it's helpful. My newsprint is very, a lot of the papers have no ink or anything on it, but it's always good to have a little bit of color. That's why newspapers are good, because then you can kind of see how they overlap, because you need to overlap things. You have to have cross bracing, or I don't know how you, what you call it, but you got to go in different angles. Every time you do a couple of bigger sheets, like what I just did, those rectangle sheets, you want to get a good long strip, which is ripping now, but that's okay, um, to go across it, to give it that strength. That's what you need. Make sense? I hope this makes sense. And I hope you make it. I hope you sit down and get, get yourself a little work area and start making a paper mache uh, pumpkin. What's going to happen after a while, where's my clay? I'm going to show you the next parts of it. I'll give you a little preview. Let me wipe my hands again. I'm going to have to wash this apron now because it's got glue all over it. But check this out. We bought this at Michael Lock on that the other day. It's polymer clay. It's, I'm not going to touch it because I have glue, but it's, it's like Play-Doh, but it's a little stiffer. And I bought orange because I'm going to mold carrot noses. And then I'm going to bake them in the, in the microwave. I think I could do it in a microwave or even a hair dryer. And then we're going to stick it to the nose. And then I got some black uh, clay. We're going to make little, uh, little circles and make little buttons and, uh, I don't know, little eyes. And um, my wife is going to knit a little scarf. A little sure scarf? You can't put that in the microwave. You can put it in the microwave. Yeah, polymer clay. You can you put it in the oven, but you can also put it in the microwave. It says it on the package. You can put it in the microwave. So um, you can make little. We did this a couple of years ago where we took some of this material. Look, I'm going to get glue on it, but you see this material? Is it on the screen? It's like a red felt, and we're going to get this needle and thread, and we're going to thread uh, white uh, threading and make little kerchiefs for their head or little hats. My wife knits these little cute scarfs that we're going to put on, a little little winter hat on the snowman. It's a lot of fun. And uh, do it along with us. And if you want to make one in the shop, you can come here uh, every Wednesday and Thursday in the afternoons. We're making uh, holiday gift cards, wrapping paper, and snow, snowmen, snowwomen, pumpkin, pumpkin. I keep saying pumpkin. Because in Halloween, I made a paper mache pumpkin. So for some reason, every time I say paper mache, and I'm referring to an object, I say paper mache pumpkin, but you can make a paper mache pumpkin if you want, but we're really making paper mache snowmen and snow women, snow people we'll call them. Um, so that's the story. Do this. Let me know how it's going. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm sure there are a lot of other uh, much better tutorials on paper mache than mine, but this is mine, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to take a balloon, blow it up a little bit, Stick it on a cup of some sort or a little container. Rip up the paper. Get some glue and water and make yourself the beginnings of a paper mache snowman or snowwoman. Uh, and then the next video, I'm going to work this along. And I'm going to show you the next step, which is second layers. And then putting a little bit of white paint on it to make it so that it looks like a snow person. And then we'll go from there. And uh, this is part one of this paper mache snow person video. Part two will come, I don't know when, a couple of days maybe. All right, so how long is this video, Luke? 14 minutes. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to make these videos short. All right, so I'm going to press pause. And uh, I'm going to keep working on this for a little while, put the first coat on. I might even put a second coat on this. And we'll begin working on our paper mache snowman. Okay, that's it. I'll see you guys later.